John chapter 16. Sometimes when I put my kids to bed at night with my wife, uh, we, uh, I had to include that part because if I dared make it look like I was the only one that put all the kids to bed, yeah, right. Like that, that. <clears throat> but Aaron and I, we put the kids to bed at night and um, we talk to them for a minute, pray for them, kiss them goodnight, leave the rooms. And uh, sometimes there's a follow-up question. As you're about to walk out the door, any parents of children will know this deal. Like, Dad? You, you know, and it's like you think it's over. And, and so you turn around and... <laughs> There's a follow-up. There's, there's, there's an add-on. And, and so you turn around. It's happened to both Aaron and myself. And uh, this will be the question. Uh, yes, son. Yes, daughter, whoever is asking this. Yes. What is it? This has been the question multiple times. How does God talk to us? Really, we're, we're going to do this at bedtime. <laughs> we're just going to do this. But now it's a spiritual question, so you feel an obligation to be a godly parent. Like, you got to, you know, it's like, if it was like, you know, can I have, you know, a juice box tomorrow? It's like, we're not talking about this right now. But like, I, I, we've had this question many times. We'll continue to get it. How does God talk to us? I think a lot of people want to know that, whether they're a kid or not. Maybe there's somebody here this morning, somebody watching online, wants to know that. How does God speak to us? Think about how many times we have had questions or prayed to the Lord. Ask God maybe for direction. Maybe somebody has direction that you're facing here this morning. You're at a fork in the road in your life or you have some big decision to make or you have some uncertainty that you need clarity on. And you've asked God, make it clear. Lord, I, guide me, lead me, show me, speak to me. And you wonder, like, how's he going to do that? How does God speak? If we are followers of Christ and we believe in the living God and the power of the Holy Spirit, having raised Jesus from the dead, indwelling the life of the believer, we ought to probably know whether or not God still speaks and how that happens and how to listen. Next few weeks, we're going to talk about that how God speaks. So if you wonder that, if you have a need in your life, if you know somebody out there and they're just wondering, how does God do it? Man, we're going to look to the Bible for some answers because they're there. Let's look at one of those ways that God speaks today um, in the scripture. John chapter 16 and verse 8, the Lord Jesus is teaching here and he's talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit after he would later be crucified and resurrected from the dead. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus uh, says, is sometimes called the helper. Verse 8, when he, and he, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, Jesus said, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. He will convict the world concerning the sin of their life. He shows the sinner their standing with God, that they are opposed to his righteousness, that they are in sin. He shows the sinner their sin and need for a savior because they did not believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit still does that. Verse 10, and concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me, that the world, despite all of their efforts, has not and still cannot achieve a righteousness of their own. Some people try to achieve a righteousness through religion. Religion has never brought anybody a righteousness that God accepts. They try to achieve a righteousness through good deeds or charity or kindness and benevolence and these kind of things, morals. This is not able to achieve the righteousness of God. The only righteousness that God accepts is the righteous one, Jesus Christ. And we need him, and we need him to apply that righteousness to our sinful souls. And he says, the Holy Spirit will convict the world concerning righteousness, real righteousness that only comes from Jesus. Verse 11. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged, Jesus said. 
How does God speak? He speaks through the Holy Spirit. And he speaks to the sinner's life by way of conviction. What do we say when people are guilty and found guilty by a court or a judge or a jury of a crime? They were convicted of such and such a thing. And Jesus said when the Holy Spirit would come, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world concerning sin. Their sin, their guilt, the righteousness that they do not have and cannot earn, but they do need, and the judgment that came upon Satan and is coming upon them because like Satan, they are walking and pursuing darkness. He will convict the sinner. And people have usually one of two reactions to the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. How does God speak? Man, he speaks through the Holy Spirit. And he speaks by way of conviction. Many people will say the first conversation they ever had with God was when they realized they were under the judgment of God and convicted under the wrath of God and their need to be rescued by Jesus. People have one of two reactions to conviction. Some, when they are convicted and they are shown their standing with God as an enemy of God, they repent immediately. They repent to the Lord, which is to turn from sin. They run from their former life and they repent and they believe on Jesus as Lord. And the Bible says, are made a new creation in Christ Jesus. He hands them, the Bible says in Isaiah the prophet, clothes them in robes of his righteousness, true righteousness. He saves them from the judgment that they are convicted of undergoing soon. He saves them. They repent and believe. You who are believers here today, indwelled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking to religious people. That doesn't matter. I'm talking to believers that are changed and saved in Jesus. Have the certainty of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your life. You, when you were convicted of sin, righteousness, and the judgment, you repented and believed on Jesus as Savior, and what once was a fear of the wrath of God is now a peace and a joy and an expectation of the coming of God to rescue and save you for eternity. Awesome. That was your reaction. Other people have a different reaction, and maybe there's the people that are sitting here right now, and you are convicted. I remember being convicted when I heard the gospel, uh, the time that God convicted me to where I needed to be saved. And I remember being under conviction. I was just a boy, but I remember. And I remember I realized there was God over there and I was over here on the other side of my sin under the judgment. The Bible says the Holy Spirit convicts them of judgment, a judgment that is coming. Some people reject conviction. If you are convicted today, you will have one of two reactions. Some people reject it. They harden their heart against it. Hebrews 4 warns those under conviction. Today, if you hear his voice, today, somebody, maybe today, right now, through the camera or sitting in the room, you are under conviction and you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. How does God speak? He speaks through the Holy Spirit. You hear his voice, but some people, they harden their heart. They steel themselves against it. And they say, no, and they run away. They run the other direction. Acts chapter 24. I'll show you an example of this. In this story, you have a, a man by the name of Paul. Many of you, if you study the Bible, you come across him often. Paul used to be a wicked, vile sinner. In fact, he termed himself one time, I'm the worst sinner there has ever been. He said, I'm the chief, is how he described himself. I am the chief of all sinners, and he said, by the grace of God, I am what I am, saved. Paul was a wicked sinner. He persecuted believers to the point of death. He stoned them, whipped them, arrested them, beat them, mocked them, and forced them to blaspheme. He was awful. Many people before the Lord Jesus were awful people. He was awful. He came under conviction. The Holy Spirit convicted his heart spoke to his sinful soul, and he repented, and he believed, and he was saved. And his old life was nailed to the cross, and a new life of works pleasing to God was raised from the dead works of sin. And you have Paul. And he's a witness for Jesus now. He's preaching the gospel now. 
And people fall under conviction when he preaches and when he witnesses and when he shares the truth with people. Still true today what happens. And some people that hardened their heart hated the conviction. They didn't realize necessarily that it was conviction, so they blamed the messenger. Many times, maybe you have been trying to be a witness and you got blamed. I don't like you. I don't like what you say. I, don't, I, I feel so judged around you. Well, you are under judgment, but it's not me judging you or you judging them, the sinner. It is the conviction, according to Jesus, he convicts the world concerning judgment. They are judged, but they are judged by God, and they feel that, but sometimes they blame you for it. You're judging me. I'm not, I'm not judging you. I I'm, I'm, have a burden for your soul, and I'm trying to point you to the hope of the gospel because you're on your way to hell like I was. But sometimes people blame you because they harden their heart against that conviction. But Paul, he got blamed, he got put in jail, and uh, he became a fascinating case study to many people that did not really believe what he believed, but they wanted to sit down and converse with him. Sometimes they liked to argue with him, sometimes they just liked to listen to him because they thought he was crazy, and so one day a man comes to town, his name is Felix, and he's like a leader guy in a region, a government person, and he comes to town, and uh, he hears that Paul is in jail, so he asks the one who has uh, jurisdiction over Paul, could, could I talk to, Paul's here, the guy like that used to be crazy and uh, was on our side, but now he says he met the Lord and heard his voice, and he's a new thing and all this. I'd like to hear this story for myself. Could I talk to him? And the guy's like, yeah, he's jail cell or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can talk to him. Acts 24, 20, let's start in verse 24. Some days later, Felix arrived with Drusilla, his wife, who was a Jewess, and sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. That's really awesome. He asked Paul, hey man, tell me this story. I've heard this crazy story. Why, why don't you tell me? And so he tells him, and he speaks about faith in Christ Jesus. When people ask you, why the change? Why the joy? What happened to your old life? It used to be bitter, angry. It used to be a cusser and violent and a liar and all these things. What happened to you? You should speak about faith in Christ Jesus. So he's telling Felix and his wife about how he believes in the Lord and how the Lord is real. And then he turns the topic to Felix himself. And look what happens. What are we talking about? How does God speak? He speaks through the Holy Spirit. And many times the first conversation is conviction of the sinner's sinful soul. Verse 25. Paul, uh, but as he was discussing, here it is, righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. The judgment to come. Felix became frightened and said, go away for the present. And when I find time, I'll summon you. What did he say? Hey, man, it's been great. Listen, I'm out of time. I got to go. I, I got a thing. You got a thing? Where's your thing? I, I, it's, 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 it's over here. I, you know what? I'm running late, and I got to go. When I really want to finish this conversation, I do. How many times have you ever heard this in your life, right? You're sitting down. You're talking. You're like, man, I got some questions. I got some questions about the Bible. I got some questions about your life. I'm going through a struggle in my life. I wonder what you'd have to say. And if you're faithful to the word of God as a witness for Jesus, your job is to turn it to the gospel. So you turn that conversation, I just need some counsel, and what they want is some psychobabble, but you turn it to the gospel. And when you turn it to the gospel, they fall under conviction, and what do they say? Oh man, listen, thanks for taking the time. I just forgot, I gotta pick my kid up or something, I gotta go. And when I find time, I wanna finish this conversation. Really? Where are you at? Felix leaves, why does he leave? Because he's scared. He became frightened. Why did he become frightened? Because he just heard from God. He fell under the convicting power. He heard the convicting voice of the Holy Spirit, convicting him of what? Jesus said, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and the judgment to come. And he was convicted and it scared him. And he does not repent, he does not believe, he does not confess Jesus as Lord and become a new creation. He hardens his heart and he runs away thinking that by outrunning Paul, he would run away from God. That'll never happen to anybody for all eternity. That will never happen, not to him and not to you. You cannot run away. He can run away from Paul. He can keep him in his jail cell. You can shoot the messenger, but you cannot run, outrun the message. It is an eternal gospel. I wonder if you've ever seen this happen. People get scared. Probably somebody's scared right now. 
I remember a couple years ago, my wife and I, we were in a restaurant here in town about two years ago. And uh, there were a bunch of people from my old life in there, high school and such, um, some of which are here today, which is the prayer of my heart. I, I talk about that often, that one of the passions. I believe this is our Jerusalem, our first uh, battlefield for the gospel is, is this town and the surrounding area. And I have a great burden uh, for those that I once committed great sin with, that I want to see them saved in Jesus. So we were in a restaurant, and I saw several of them in there, and I saw a table of people over in the corner, and some I knew, and some of them I knew, a couple of them were here. They, they, they've been saved, they know the Lord, and they are a part of the ministry here. And a couple of them were sitting at the table. And the best I can tell, I'm not the judge of any man's soul, but the best I can understand is they don't know Jesus as Lord and they need the gospel. They need to be saved just like I did. And so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to go say hi. So I go over to the table and I start, I just come up to the table and I shake hands. And say, hey guys, how you doing? How you doing? And my goal is to interact with the people who I think don't know the Lord. And so I said hi to the people I knew, and, and I, I knew these other guys from 20 years ago. And I said, hey, man, good to see you. He said, hey, good to see you, Wes, good to see you. And I, I shook hands. And the person that was sitting at the table that's a part of the rock said, hey, to this other guy, said, hey, you ever heard Wes preach? And I'm like, dude, really, we're going to do this right now? I, I, I was just trying to say, I'm just trying to, like, break the wall down here. You ever, you ever heard Wes preach? And... Uh, the guy said, and I'm thinking it's a flat, no, I'm thinking, no, trust me, I know this guy, and I know where we were a long time ago, and he's never heard me preach. And he said, yes, once. Now everyone's uncomfortable. <laughs> and so I look, and, and so the, the believers, they look at me like in a panic. They're like, 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 sorry, man, I didn't mean, he obviously hates you. And, you know, it's like, I, like, yo, I don't know what to do here. And so I, I was fine with it because I suspected, I did not know, but I suspected what was going to happen next. And some people would think, oh, this is going to make Wes feel bad. I do not feel bad. It's okay. Because what that is, is if it, if it went how I thought it was going to go, it's going to be validation of the word of God. Like if you want to punch the messenger, that's okay because that is validation that what the word of God says is true. That the living, powerful, Holy Spirit of almighty God still convicts the hearts of sinners to the point of fear, hardening, and running. That's okay. That's okay. That just, that just bolsters my ambition to be faithful because it's true. So I just, I took the ball, I took the ball. They, they, I could tell they felt bad for bringing it up. So I took the ball and I said, uh, I said, really, you didn't come back? He said, no. <laughs> and he said this, he said, and I never will. He wasn't being mean and we, we were kind of smiling, but he meant it. I said, never? He said, never, dude. I said, let me ask you this. Would you at least tell me the story? He said, oh, I'll tell you the story. He said, tell me the story. What, what happened, man? Somebody mean to you? And he said, I don't know, dude. He said, well, tell me the story. He said, well, a couple years ago, he said, I was dating a girl. And he, these are his words. He said, she was a spiritual girl. Uh, you know, that means who knows. But that's what he said. He said, she was a spiritual girl. And he said, we were dating and we were talking. And she said that... She wanted to, in our relationship, have God to be a part of it. So she wanted to attend church together somewhere. And neither of us really grew up with that and had anywhere that we thought we ought to go. So nobody had a lean. And she said, he said, I didn't want to go anywhere. So she said to me, wherever you feel comfortable, that's where we'll go. I'll go with you wherever. I just want to go somewhere. I said, really? Okay. And he said, so I knew... This is what he said. I knew that you were a pastor in town. I'd heard about this and somebody told this. And, and, and uh, he said, I just thought I'd be more comfortable since I knew who you were at least, that I might see you there because I'm not comfortable going in church. I don't know how to act. I don't know how to dress and I'm scared to death to go in there. He said, so I knew you were in there and I thought maybe if I saw you, it'd make me feel better. So I said, well, let's go over there. And she said, that sounds great. And so one day we come in and uh, he said, we sit in the back of the room. He said, I said, we're sitting in the back. She said, okay, we can sit wherever you want. So he said, we came in and we sat in the back. And uh, he said, everyone's real nice. He said, no one looked weird. And every, everyone was, they all look like normal people. 
This is a real conversation. I don't remember exact words, but he said these things. I said, okay. Then what happened? We, we came in and, and everything you would expect and somebody greeted us. We sat down and, and it got started and stuff happened and it, it, it was fine. And he said, and, and you didn't see me because I was sitting in the back. And he said, and then you walked up and I was relieved because I was hoping you would be there because I knew you were the only person I knew there. I'm like, well, that's great, man. Glad you felt like that. And he said, and you opened the Bible. You said, open your Bible. And he said, and I, w- I expected that. He said, if I'm there, I expected someone to say, open the Bible. He said, so I was cool with that. So you opened the Bible. He said, then it got crazy. I said, what do you mean by that? And so this couple is still sitting at this table going. I said, what happened? And he said, you started reading in the Bible. And then you started preaching about what the Bible said. And then you'd read back in the Bible. And then you'd say, maybe there's somebody here who is A, B, and C, according to the Bible. That's you, and you need this. And he said, dude, I had chills on my arms. My heart started beating. And he said, it was like you were following me around, taking notes for the last five years of my life. (laughs) He said, I was, this is what he said, I was scared to death. And he said, as soon as you prayed, he said, I grabbed your hand, I stood up, and I walked out the back doors, and I never came back. Conviction is what happened. You understand what happened? I'm no, like, that has nothing to, you realize he blames me. It has nothing to do with me. Do you understand that? I was the least involved person in that entire story. You understand that, right? Felix when he heard of righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, became frightened and said, I got to go for now. That man, who I do care for, and I hope he comes back. Wouldn't it be crazy if he was here today? <laughs> he thinks the craziest thing happened. That, that would now be the craziest thing that happened. That'd be crazy. Maybe he's watching. He just threw his computer. I, listen, I, I like that guy. I care for his soul. But what happened is I, I don't do carnival tricks. I don't know anything about his life. The Spirit of God spoke to his heart and it scared him to death because it spoke to him concerning sin, righteousness, and the judgment to come. And for that day at least, he hardened his heart and he ran. If you're convicted today, what are you going to do? You can outrun me, you can outrun us, you can't outrun God. Galatians chapter 5. So when you repent and believe in the Lord, which I hope if someone's being convicted right now, that's what you will do, but those that have, the Bible says that you are no longer an enemy of God, but you are adopted as sons and daughters of the high king of heaven, and you have peace with God provided to you, not through your good works, but through the work of the cross. Listen, Jesus did the work necessary to pay for peace between us and God. And when he paid that full price at the cross, he uttered the words, it is finished. It is finished. The work and the payment necessary to bring us to peace with God was finished at the cross. But we must believe and surrender to him as our Lord for him to hand us that peace. You can harden your heart against that option, keep that door locked from your side, and remain an enemy of God. But when you believe in the Lord, the Bible says we are indwelled, listen, indwelled by the Holy Spirit. We are sealed, the scripture says in Ephesians, by the Holy Spirit. So that changes our entire being. That changes our relationship to God. That changes who we are, where we go, what we do, what we say, how we think, how we feel. Because the Holy Spirit indwells the true believer. Religion cannot indwell anybody. The spirit of the living God indwells the true, repentant, confessing Jesus believer. And God, through the Holy Spirit, continues to speak. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. He says, but I say, walk by the Spirit. If you want, live your life being led by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Many of us, we battle desires of the flesh that are sinful desires. 
to say, man, and people say all the time, I wish I could stop. How do I stop? I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to desire these things. I don't want to go these places. I don't want to do this stuff. Well, how do you do that? Not by your own fleshly power, I'll tell you that. But he says, if you walk by the Spirit, you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. If you are led by the Spirit, if your life is lived by the Spirit, it says this, verse 17, for the flesh, that is this mortal body infected with the sin of Adam, for the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit. Many things that God wants, we don't want to do, right? And the Spirit against the flesh. For these, the spirit and the flesh, are in opposition to one another. They are opposed, they are enemies, so that you may not do the things that you please. You want to do things pleasing to God sometimes, but because you live in sin other times, you, you live in this tug of war between the flesh and the spirit. And it says, verse 18, but, but, you don't have to live in the tug of war. You don't have to win or, or live losing the war, verse 18, if, if, I don't know if that's true of everybody here that knows the Lord, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You are not under the law of sin and of death and the desires of the flesh. If, if, and only if, you are led by the Spirit. What's the Bible say in the book of maybe Proverbs? Many are the plans of a man's heart, but the Lord directs his steps. That is the leading of the Holy Spirit. That is one way that God speaks. How does he speak? He speaks through the Holy Spirit. He convicted you as a sinner. If you believed on him as Lord, you were indwelled with the Holy Spirit, and he begins to speak to you now as a follower of Christ. One of those ways is leading your life. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Um, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What's it say? Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct, he will direct your paths. You acknowledge all your ways. Many people have like one way, Sunday. Six days, 24 hours a day, they are led by the desires of the flesh and the foolish wisdom of this world. But in all our ways, if we acknowledge him, God, what do you want here? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? How do you want me to respond? Where do you want me to go? Lord, please, if you would open this door, I will follow you. I will trust you. I'll be afraid, but give me confidence. You've not given me a spirit of fear. If you close this door, I'll trust you and not try to kick it down. All your ways, acknowledge him. And he, the spirit of the living God, will direct your paths. If we are led by the spirit, we are not under the law of the flesh. Are you led by the spirit today? Uh, a couple examples in the Bible. Maybe you'll recognize this. If you're not led by the Spirit, but you know the Lord, man, let's figure that out. What's the deal? What do people say? Man, I, was, I just wish I could hear from God. According to the Bible, we should hear from God in all our ways. That he directs our paths. He guides our steps. That he leads us against the desires of the flesh. Leads us out of slavery of sin. Come on. Sometimes he leads us where to go and what to say. Right? Acts chapter 8, I, I talk about it sometimes. Read it later. If you say, if you're one of those people, man, I'd like to read the Bible, I just where to go. Read Acts chapter 8 later. Plus, I bring it up as an illustration about every other week. <laughs> and finally, you'll be in the know. <clears throat> What's it say? There was a couple guys in this story, great story. Man, so many layers to that story. Sometimes we're preaching it with regard to baptism or salvation or whatever. Uh, one guy of the two, Philip, is a disciple of the Lord, Philip. He knows Jesus, he is indwelled with the Holy Spirit, and therefore his life is led by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? What does that look like? And does that look like that now for us? Sure it does. So he is walking down a desert road one day. Um, Acts chapter 8, if you ever want to check. Uh, he's walking down a desert road, and it, it says it was a... You know, desert road, lonely road. He's like by himself, right? And as he's walking, another man is coming, an Ethiopian man on a chariot. And he's also alone, as far as the Bible talks about. He's coming on a chariot, and he's reading a scroll, the prophet Isaiah, because he had just been on like a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, a religious pilgrimage. But the truth was there because the word of God was there nonetheless. And something happened to that Ethiopian man's heart while he was there but he didn't fully understand it. So as Philip is seeing this man coming on the chariot, the Bible says, so awesome, 
They've never met. They don't know each other. The Bible says, and the spirit said to Philip, go join his chariot. How many times says uh, the spirit of God, we, what do we say as believers? Prompted. We say that sometimes. Led, moved, stirred, whatever words you like. How many times has the Holy Spirit of God spoken to you and said, go do this right now. Walk over there and do that. And it might be, as often God is, out of your normal character. I don't know if Philip made it a practice to assault random people on chariots and say, can I have a ride? As far as we know, that never happened before or since. But this day, because God was guiding his steps, because he was being led by the Holy Spirit, not the flesh, the Spirit said, go join his chariot. So Philip walks over. He has no speech prepared that we're ever told about. We'll talk about that in a second. And, but he's trusting in the Spirit of God. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will guide your paths. So he walks up, and he goes, can I join your chariot? He says, for sure. And so he sees him reading the prophet Isaiah. He doesn't even know why he's there, but the Spirit led him there. Sometimes the Spirit leads you places or leads you to say things or meet people or do things that you don't even know why. You're in it and you don't know why. Maybe somebody right now in this season of your life, you feel led of the Holy Spirit to do or be or go where you're going and doing what you're doing, and you don't even know why. And people say, well, why? If God wanted you to do that, he'd tell you why. Then you haven't read the Bible. <laughs> no, sir. He tells you to do stuff all the time. He doesn't tell you why. So he said, he's, hey, what are you? So Philip asks, what are you reading? Do you understand, he said, do you understand what you're reading? Now, how did he know to ask that? Spirit of the living God is how. And the man looks at Philip, doesn't say that part, but I think he did. He, <laughs> and he says, no, no, I don't understand. How could I understand unless someone were sent to explain it to me? Now, come on. Now, what's the Spirit of God doing? Take Philip out. Take the Ethiopian man out and watch the Holy Spirit speaking. Right? How does God speak? He speaks through the Holy Spirit all the time. He's speaking to the man who is a sinner. That Ethiopian man is a sinner. He doesn't know Jesus. He has not repented. He is not his Lord, and he is not saved. But what is he? He is convicted. He is convicted by the word of God he holds in his hands of sin, of righteousness, and the judgment to come. That man is heavy under conviction and seeking peace that he cannot find. So many people. God is speaking to him, and as he searches, somehow trying to understand, but he doesn't understand, because the Bible says the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, so he doesn't understand. God sends the believer, and he speaks to that guy as he's speaking to this guy. He says, Philip, go join. How, do you understand what you're reading? No, how could I? And they get in this conversation. The Bible says, beginning, from, I got goosebumps about this story, beginning from this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. And that man repents and believes on Jesus as Lord is saved and baptized on the side of the road. God talks through his Holy Spirit all the time. He leads our life. Are you led like that? He leads us away from things sometimes. Sometimes he'll lead you to something. Somebody needs to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, more open to God speaking to your life. I'm not saying every feeling you have. I'll talk about that next week. Some people have crazy thoughts and crazy feelings and eat a turtle Sunday at midnight and have a nightmare and think it was God. Okay, not everything you feel and think is the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit does lead our life and we need to be open and we need to be available to God and we need to be a usable vessel to the Lord. Sometimes he leads us away from things and people and situations and we don't know why that either. In Acts 16, you check me because the Bible says in Acts 17 that you should check me. Check that. <laughs> it does. Don't just take my word for it. I could be saying anything I want. I could be saying crazy stuff. You're like, well, he seems to believe it. It's probably true. Uh, the Bible says you're supposed to buy me a brand new truck. Like, how do you know? You got to check me. You don't, don't trust, trust the word of God. Check it. But in Acts 16, what it says is this. That Paul, wanting to preach Jesus to a certain town, and these other guys were about to sail a boat and go to this certain place and preach the gospel. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes the motive of what you're doing in the place where you're going, there's nothing on the surface wrong with that. But what does the Bible say in Acts 16? But they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit. Interesting. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit. Something about the Spirit of God testifying in them 
spoke to them. We're going to go preach here. There's nothing wrong with that. Until God says, don't do that. Don't, don't go there. And they, they, they didn't, and they obeyed the Holy Spirit, and they went to a different town and preached the gospel in a different place, and God did a work. What, you say, well, why? I don't know. The Bible never tells you because God doesn't owe us an explanation for every single thing he says to do or not do. Sometimes you think you're going to be in a relationship with somebody and they seem godly and spiritual, but for whatever reason, God's like, no, you, are, you feel what? Forbidden by the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, why? I, can't, I need to know why. You don't need to know why. If you truly believe in the Lord and he indwells your life and you trust him more than even yourself, you follow and you follow and you trust and you don't go back. There's a reason, and God knows a reason. It's a godly reason. You're going to make this decision. You're going to go down this path. You're going to put your hand to this task. These words are about to come out of your mouth, and God says, don't talk, so you shut your mouth. Like, why, why? It's not always that it's bad or evil, but there is a reason, and sometimes God, through the Holy Spirit, forbids us as much as he leads us. Some of us, man, just need to listen. We need to listen, and we need to obey, and we need to trust. He will teach us what to say, Jesus said in John chapter 14, well, let's take a look. John chapter 14, verse 26. Look at this. How does God speak? Man, he speaks through the Holy Spirit. To the sinner and the believer. Different things, but he speaks nonetheless. John 14, 26, Jesus said, the helper, the Holy Spirit, so there, that's pretty clear, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father, Jesus said, will send in my name, look at this, he, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Isn't that interesting? He's not saying don't study. He's not saying don't be diligent in the word of God. Again, coming sermons in future weeks. But he is saying that in the moment, there are times, or in the hour of your need, the hour of your hopelessness, of your discouragement, of your worry, of your fear, of your persecution even, he will teach you all things and he will bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. How many times sometimes that you need something right in that moment, you're talking with someone or you're caring for someone or you're being challenged on the gospel or, or you know, whatever. And, and you, you just need wisdom that you don't innately have. And, and if you're a, a, a Christ follower every day and you're seeking the Lord's help, you just pray quietly in your spirit. You're like, Lord, just help me with this. Just help me, just give me something. Give me wisdom, give me words, give me scripture. And something will come come to your mind and quite honestly you'll say something brilliant and powerful and true backed by the word of God and you walk away later not boastful but humble in heart thrilled because and you and you say what do you say yeah I just said this to this person I gotta tell you I don't know how I came up with that how many, have you ever said that? You're like, I don't know where I even got that. I don't know how I remembered. I, didn't even, I don't even know when the last time I read that was or whatever, but it just came and I just said it and I saw God work in their life. How'd you, the helper, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and he will bring to your remembrance, Jesus said, all that is concerning me and these kinds of things. So sometimes he brings to your remembrance what you need in that hour. Mark 13, back to the left a little bit. Even in persecution, people mock your witness, they mock the gospel, they hate what you stand for, but they're under conviction and they're ready to shoot the messenger, but you want to be faithful. And sometimes you think, man, if they come after me, what am I going to say? Family, that's one of the toughest. Mark 13, 10. What are we looking at? We're looking at ways the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The gospel must first be preached to all the nations, Jesus said. And he's talking about persecution. It might look different for you than what he was explaining to the disciples, but he is talking to us too. When they arrest you and hand you over, what's he say? Do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour. Not whatever you feel like. Not whatever you think, whatever is given you in that hour, that hour of testing. For it, look at this, it is not you who speak, but it is the Holy Spirit. He teaches us where to go. He leads our life. He guides our steps. 
He leads our paths. He clarifies our decision. He even teaches us what words to say or not say. In your testimony, in your bold witness, it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying what you say is always the inspired word of God, but those words were given and you were led by the Holy Spirit as Philip was with the eunuch on the road. How did he know how to ask that question and say those words? The Holy Spirit told him what to say. So why doesn't it happen more? Because the Bible says we can quench the Holy Spirit, believers. Just like an unbeliever can harden their heart against the Holy Spirit, believers can quench the Holy Spirit. That is the idea of stifling a fire with a wet blanket. And many people, their life and their sin and their continual tug of war that they enter into with the flesh is quenching the Holy Spirit. You hear all these things, you see these things in the word of God. It's not that you don't believe it, it's that you're asking the question, why has that never happened to me? The Bible says in Ephesians 4 that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. We cause grief and anguish and a choking of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And some people would be hearing more from the Holy Spirit. They would be being used more of God. They would be being guided more on the path of their life and their steps if they weren't spending so much time quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? The Bible says in Ephesians 4, I think verse 30, you check me later. Ephesians 4.30, it talks about all these things surrounding the Holy Spirit. And it says that some of the ways that we grieve and that we quench the Holy Spirit are through bitterness. Some of us claim to know the Lord, but we harbor bitterness in our life. And we, at the same time as we're tolerating bitterness and we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our heart, are asking the question, I wonder why God's not speaking to me. He is. He's speaking to you about your bitterness. And calling you to repent and let it fully be nailed to the cross and walk away. It says we, what do we do? We uh, grieve the Holy Spirit through slander. We talk of the things of the Lord out of one side of our mouth. James said this is a polluted well. He says that you have, uh, you have clean water and bitter water coming out of the same well. He's talking about our mouth and he says those things shouldn't be. And when we do that, when we praise the Lord here and sing how great thou art, and we go gossip and slander and trash somebody in an hour, that, what does that do? That grieves the Holy Spirit. And then we have the gall to ask tomorrow morning. I wonder why, I, I don't care what that pastor said. I don't ever hear from the Holy Spirit. You just did. The silence and the grief of the Holy Spirit should drive you to repentance. He's talking to you through his word. We grieve, it says we grieve the Holy Spirit through unforgiveness. We accept the grace and the mercy of God that we need for our sin, but when somebody else wrongs us and they sin against us, we hold a chokehold on there. Oh Lord, praise the Lord, thank you for your grace. And we got somebody pinned against the wall because we don't want them to get to the cross that we got to. Come on, what does that do? It grieves the Holy Spirit. It quenches the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And a lot of people are going around asking, why don't they hear? And it's right there. If you were to let that go, what would God be saying? How would he be using you? How much more of a positive life with the Holy Spirit would yours be? He speaks to the Holy Spirit. He speaks to the sinner by way of conviction. If you're convicted today, man, I encourage you, confess Jesus as Lord now. Today, it says, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Don't wait till tomorrow. You don't need to talk to anybody. Confess the Lord and believe on him and be saved. God is speaking conviction. When we believe, we are indwelled and he speaks. He leads our life. We are not under the slavery of the flesh. He teaches us what to say. He guides our steps. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Would you bow your heads this morning? Maybe somebody's here today, you say, man, I just need to, I need to get right with God because this morning maybe God was speaking through his word and through the preaching, not through me, through the preaching that he spoke something to your heart maybe I didn't even say. But the Lord is preaching to your heart and you heard from God, man, you have this in your life and that is a grief and that is a quenching thing. Or maybe you've been praying about something and God just confirmed the direction. I don't know, but... Just take time with the Lord. I'm going to stop talking now and just, if God is speaking, respond to him and hear him. Listen, sometimes we talk too much and we need to listen. He speaks through his Holy Spirit.